Hello, Mikhail. Thanks for your time. Uh, three out uh, in the last week. Flo, Kieran, Nuno today. Good thing for them and for the club. Well, we're working together to find uh, the best possible solutions, and um, we found them. And um, I think the players are happy, and, and the club in general. I think we did um, some good business as well. With Balogun, it's obviously a, a permanent deal, uh, and, and a good deal as well, because pure profit, an academy graduate, and I think a 17.5% salon clause as well. Well, we didn't have uh, now space for him in the squad to give him the minutes that he needs, and he did really well just uh, last year in, um, in his long period, you know, and he's evolving the right way. And he wanted as well the chance to continue developing his career. He's going to a really good club. They have huge experience on developing talent, as everybody knows. So really happy for him as well. It's deadline day. Are you, ex are you as excited as the rest of us? <laughs> You should be tired. You've been doing that for, for many months. So uh, I think it's the end, uh, at least here in the UK, not everywhere, but at least here. So, uh, yeah, let's finish it in the right way. Mikel Arteta, deadline day, M-A-D-D, -D, mad. Is it going to be a mad one or a serene one for you? <laughs> for me, serene, I don't have to do much more work. It's more get all the recruitment, everyone, the boys, trying to finalise a few things they still today. And that'll be outs, obviously, because you did your business for ins early on. Yes. Can, 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 we, can you bear with us if I play a little game of stay or go? In what sense? <laughs> Please come in, you mean? I don't expect nobody to come. Stay or go? I Rob Holding, know. stay or go? No, I, I'm not going to reply anything, you know that. So it's not stay or go, it's no? They are, there is nobody else coming in that we don't expect. That's what I can say. On stay or go, obviously not staying with you in this international break, but going on England duty, Eddie, you pleased for him? So pleased. He's someone deserves in this squad, that's, that's him as well. Um, an academy player that had uh, some moments, you know, when his pathway wasn't very clear and he had to fight it through. And I just love his mentality, his work rate, how much he loves this game and, uh, and how hard he's fought you know to to be recognized at that level in this country to play there it's you have to be phenomenal at something and um, and i'm so happy for him do you take personal pride in, in the part you've played i think well i think everybody that has been involved in his development obviously feels extremely proud to be part of that journey with him you know and uh, so everybody that was here at the academy with him everybody that has in that, been in that journey his family for sure they're extremely proud of him so really nice moment for him manchester united Always a big game. How important is it that you put down a marker this early in the season with a, with a victory? Well, that's what we want, obviously. We know that the history between the two clubs and, and the games that we had in the past as well. Last year it was a, a really good example. So it's going to be an extremely competitive match, really a big battle to, um, on Sunday. And uh, obviously we want to, to come away from that with, with three points. Hi, Mikel. Um, on Manchester United on Sunday, as Gary touched on there, billed by many as a huge fixture, despite how early into the season we are just now. How much do you view this meeting as an early indicator of both clubs' credentials for the Premier League title? I don't know. I think it's that early in the season. You know, we all want to win games. We want to play the best possible way, and um, that is not going to dictate. But obviously, it gives you momentum. It gives you belief. And before the international break, it's always very important to to finish well, to, to win your game and, and go back now in, in September with another block of games before the, the next one with a, with a high. If both league fixtures last season between you and United were pretty gripping, I think nine goals scored between you. What is it about this encounter that makes it such a high scoring fixture? Well, first of all, the quality of the players, obviously, there are a lot of offensive uh, top players in, in the two teams and, and they as well probably the, the approach of of both teams, the way they want to play. Um, there were some errors as well there involved, um, which hopefully we can eradicate as well. But um, normally it's very entertaining match. Yeah, um, you remain unbeaten after three games, seven points from nine, a return only bettered by Man City so far. Uh, you spoke though of your frustration at points lost in Saturday's draw against Fulham. How much do you feel that last season's title challenge has raised expectation around the club's ambitions this season for yourself personally and also for your fans? We raise the level in everything that we do every single year and we have to demand each other more and better. And this is what we do. And when you see the reaction when you draw a match, I think it's a great indicator of where you want to be and the demands that you put um, to yourself. 
Okay, and finally from me, um, you've been fairly experimental in your lineups and your opening games so far compared to last season at least. I just wonder how happy are you with the effect that those changes have had on the team as a whole and, and how happy are you with your players up to now? Really happy, I said, against Fulham. I'm watching the, after watching the game twice that we played ten times better. Uh, I don't know if it was six or ten, but we definitely play six or ten times much better. But this is about results. And one thing is to play really well and they want to compete really well. And what we didn't do is when we had to compete in certain moments the best possible way to do that. But play ten times better. I reaffirm you again. Mikel, just on that, what is it that this formation that you played last week and this defence that you like so much that, that makes you play ten times better? Well, you're, you're the four at the back, party at right back, and then you've got Benwa, Gabriel, and then Kirill at left back. What did you like so much about that? I think we discussed formations in a different way. In the other day, there were 36 different formations in the match. Against Manchester City, 43. So I don't know what formation we talk about. For me, it's something very different. Maybe for the wise that you look. No, no, but I'm, I think a, a lot of people look at the teams you picked and would say that the, the back four you picked last season was so successful. Ah, the, the personnel is different, yeah. Yeah. So is there a chance that you could revert back to that for the Man United game on Sunday? Well, I played different against, against Man Manchester City and there were 43 different structures in different phases. Every morning I come from my house to Colney. Sometimes I leave at six. I need to go in the windscreen because it's icy. And at six o'clock, normally, I go Finsley Road and then A41 because it's faster. Now, Finsley Road is 20 miles an hour. So sometimes I take a back door. But then I go on and then 25. But depending if it's a school ride and that time, I take one exit. If it's after seven o'clock, I take a different exit. And then I go. And one day I have a flat tire. What do I do? I have to replace it. Maybe I take a different road because the garage is there. So every game is a different story, guys. Different story. Okay. In, in that case, then forgive me, but are you tempted to play the, the side that was so successful for you, for you last season? I cannot do that. I have different players. <laughs> I cannot do that. Zinchenko was injured. Granite is not here. How can I do that? Unless we bring them back, I think it's not going to happen. It's different, and it's going to be different. And the other is going to be different because it's a different season, and this is the beauty of it. The beauty of the thing that I enjoy the most, that is new. And we can still do much, much better a lot of things. Let's do that. And, and Zinchenko, will he be back for Sunday? Because he's so critical to the way you play. Well, Zinchenko is a really important player for us. You know, like he was Jurian. What Jurian was giving us in the first few games, it's, it was incredible. But he wasn't there, so we have to do something else. And we have another injury, and we're going to have to do something else. And if Bukayo is not there, we're going to have something else. So the N25 won't be good enough. Maybe we take another one. But if I speak to a taxi driver that has learned the, the whole London for 20 years, I know nothing compared to him because he will tell me all the streets and options and the best times. M25 is very bad at the moment, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> Depending on what time, though. I'm telling you, at 6 a.m. is okay. At 6 a.m., take it. It's the fastest way. Hi, Mikel. Um, hope you will. You've spoken, obviously, already about Eddie Nketiah and how pleased you are about him being in the England squads. Are you surprised that Ben White's been overlooked again by Gareth Southgate? Ben has been incredible since the start of the season again. And uh, obviously we know that he was there and, and what happened is totally down to, to Southgate and him to make that decision, that call whenever it is necessary. But he certainly has the level and I think he's proven that over the last few years. There's been speculation about Emil Smith-Rowe's future this week. Will he still be an Arsenal player coming into the transfer window? And if so, what sort of role will he play for you this season? The role like everybody else does, that's just to, to try to, to give his best to make the team better. And uh, your thoughts on the Champions League draw of Arsenal being given yesterday? It was, first of all, great to sit there. I was there with my kids uh, waiting for it. They were betting on it and, and it, was, it was a great fun. Um, it's what it is. We don't have any say on that. Some beautiful games to play, some very difficult matches to play there as well and uh, very looking forward to, to start that journey. Lastly, does it make, it make you even more excited for the Champions League this season? Is that a, does it make you even more excited now you know the draw for the Champions League? For sure. We were waiting for it. You, you just want to understand who you're playing and once we get the fixtures and the date um, even more so we can start really preparing for, for those games. It's
is that a competition you think Arsenal can win this year? Well, we are participating, so we have a chance. But let's start with the uh, with the first game and, and see what we get. Best luck, sweet game. Thank you, Jason. Mikel, when when Timber got injured, there, there was an expectation from the outside, rightly or wrongly, that you would go into the market and maybe sign another defender. From now, you're saying you're not expecting anyone else to come in. What what happened? Did you not find the right player? Did you decide you've got the options internally? Well, we've done quite a lot and obviously we have a lot of uncertainty with a lot of players as well, so we have to be very cautious and um, and um, and find alternatives and ways. Not sometimes that you want to do everything that is needed, sometimes it's not possible and we have to adapt. So is it a case then that had you been able to get players out? Yeah, we cannot go and buy another three players and if somebody gets injured, uh, long term, do something else. It, it was just not possible. And United signed uh, Rasmus Hoyland for, for a lot of money in the summer. We, obviously, he's not played in England yet. How, how much do you know about him? I prefer not to speak about players. Obviously, it's a, a huge talent, and everybody is talking really highly of him. And uh, and he will have to prove that in in this league. We just wondered how unpredictable it, it it makes United or preparing to face United when you don't know whether a player that you know big money, yeah. a lot expected. Well, but not like any other club, they would try to to get their squad um, at the highest level and have all the. Uh, different qualities that they need to challenge for all the trophies, and I'm sure that's that's what they're trying to do. We'll go last couple in the last section, Kyle. Hi, Mikel. Um, you spoken there about how happy you are for Eddie this week. Is it arguably going to be even more difficult now to make that decision up top because Gabriel Jesus is back fit, and would you sort of feel more difficult leaving Eddie out if if you need to do that on Sunday? No, I think it's. Um, I don't see it that way. I just see pride there, and and I see a player that at the end is is a. It's something that has happened for a reason, and the reason is the way he pushes everybody, the way he pushes himself every single day to be as as best as he possibly can, and and that's the headache that he gives us every single day. I said it when when I didn't play against Man City, what he did it, and and I'm sure that everywhere he's been, when he's been with under 18, 19s, 21s, 23s, senior team is going to be doing the same with every manager. And just on Emil, <laughs> have you had any conversations with him? Since he's come back from such a successful England under 21 Euros, just to say, you know, this is my plan for you this season. This is where we view you in the squad, or is it sort of letting him get on with it on the training ground? No, obviously, I had conversation with him, and and it's important for him to understand where he is. And and it was always going to be tricky the first three or four weeks, not for us, but for all the clubs. And you see all the rumours and all the players that are not playing that are unhappy, and not only in this country but in every country because it's one game. Um, Per week for a month, you know, and everybody's going with a new season with huge aspiration, and there is not minutes for everybody. And uh, September will be very different. Oh, we go. You mentioned 36, and I think 43 different formations in those games. Can can every professional footballer do that, or do you, when you recruit, you have to look for players that can take those kind of things on board and can? And can no, every player it? has to do it. Unconsciously, it's possible. But everybody has to do it. Some of them they do it consciously and consciously provoking the right thing, making the right decision, or not they just do it naturally and they are in the wrong position a lot. But that happens in the game, that's a fact. It's like your battery life is, I don't know, two hours, two and a half hours. In football, there is that many structures that happen in a football match. And is that, is that changed in the modern game, or, or were you a player that would, would have to do a similar thing when you play? Depends a lot on the position. Against Man City, they were more because they changed formation more, so it's a lot of sequences of play that permitted more structures. So it was different.